Hi there. As you are aware, there are companies like Lettuce Grow that sell you seedlings when you buy their hydroponic units. And that is perfectly fine. But in the past few months, the prices on those Lettuce Grow, lettuce grow seedlings have gone way up. In addition, lots of people suspect that bugs <laughs> come with those seedlings. Um, I believe the price of one seedling right now is $3.99, which is a lot. For that same $3.99, you could buy a whole pack or even two packs of seeds, lettuce seeds, leafy greens, or herbs, and you can grow your own seedlings. It's very easy and it saves a lot of money and it doesn't take that long. Here's when how. it comes to starting your own seeds for your lettuce grow, I harvest, garden, or even tower garden, there are basically four different brands of plugs that you can use that are all the same size. Here we have the Viagro Super Plugs, Rapid Rooter, Organi, which is by VP, VPS, and then uh, Root Riot. I don't have a bag of Root Riot because I used them all up. Um, but these are all about 1.25 inches, which fit perfectly into a two inch or so net cup for all of those systems. The, um, I don't have a tower garden, so I haven't tried that. I'm not exactly sure what size their cages are, but the lettuce grow one is a little bit smaller than two inches and these fit in there perfectly. You can also use these in a click and grow. You can use them in any systems that use two inch net cups, or if you use them in like Cracky or DWC with three inch net cups, then you would nest them in place with uh, clay pebbles or similar. Okay, something else that you're going to need to start your own seedlings for your lettuce grow are obviously seeds. I have selected a few additional varieties of lettuce and a couple of herbs. We have broadleaf sage. For the herb, salad burnet, calypso cilantro, and lemon mint. And then for lettuce, I have Yugoslavian red butterhead, cinnamon, cimarron, and Lord, uh, mervillus des quatre saisons. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that is French, obviously. It stands for something else that I have the English version of, but don't ask me to look that up. I'll put it on the screen. So, I already have a lot of lettuce and leafy greens started. I'm just doing a few more to fill in some blank spots that I'll probably have. And once you have your seeds chosen, you're also going to need some type of tray to put your growing medium in. These are my Rapid Rooter plugs that I have previously soaked. So they're nice and wet and ready to go. The tray is from Amazon. These come in usually a pack of 10 or more and they're really cheap under $20 for that many and as you can see the plugs fit in there perfectly I love these because they come with the dome that has a little vent so you can close it off when you want total humidity and you can vent it when uh, the seedlings start to grow and then you just remove it I put a little label on one corner of it with a number one so when I use my logs like this one I will know that this is tray number one and this is the first spot on this side. So that will correspond to what's on my log. Speaking of, I need to print out a new log. Be right back. All right, here we go. And I have these logs for these trays specifically. For the larger trays, uh, the 55 cell from Gurney's, the 60 cell Biodome from Park Seed, and all of the Arrow Gardens on my website, littletechgirl.com. You can grab the PDFs there for free. So I'm going to put today's date on here, 3-30, 2023. And this is my tray number one. So I'm just going to write that on the side. So now as I put my seeds in, I will be sure to label it so I know what's what. I learned a long time ago, you have to label it. You think you're going to remember, you're not going to remember unless you're doing a whole tray of one thing. But in my case, I'm not doing that. Oh, some other useful tools to have. Tweezers. Lots of seed kits um, come with tweezers. So I have a few different pair of these now that I keep down here just for this reason. And this is washi tape. I have a few different ones of these that I got either from um, 
Happy Planner or the Dollar Store, and you will see why I have these in a moment. Okay, let's get started. As previously mentioned, my pods have already been soaked. When you buy them, the bag is going to be damp. However, I like to soak them with a little bit of peroxide in the water, a little warm water with peroxide, just in case there are any uh, pests in there, hitchhikers, it takes care of that. Some people boil them, you can do that as well. I wouldn't boil them any longer than like five minutes. Then you wanna completely let them cool down or then rinse them in cold water to cool them down before you put your seeds in. So for this one, broadleaf sage, I'm gonna just do two pods of this. Another thing that you can do in these is you can put more than one seed in each pod for some things, like the herbs would probably be okay. Or if you know you're going to plant this out, say in your outside garden, and you're gonna split the pot, you can put more than one in there. But I'm gonna put one seed in each pot because these are gonna go right into my large unit. And this is how I end up with seeds everywhere. And then I have mystery seeds <laughs> and end up dropping them to see, oh, well, let's see what that is. So there's a little hole in the middle of these plugs. You just wanna put the seed in there. Make sure you close your seeds up. Label it before you move on to the next thing. Broadleaf sage. And it's just that simple. Now I'm gonna move on to a lettuce because I want to show you when the tweezers are helpful. This is the Cimarron. Also, depending on the seed company that you buy, some of the packages will come um, sort of reclosable. Some will not. I saw a seed jump out of there. So there's our seed right there. <laughs> Cimarron lettuce, but I wanna show you. Lettuce seeds are really small, really small. So your tweezers help you pick that up and put just one in the pod. Some people like to overseed. You can put two in each pod if you want to ensure germination and then you can thin them later. Put my extra ones back. Now, here's where the washi tape comes in handy. You take one of these. You can use scotch tape, but that tears up the packages. These tend to stick well, and then when you pull it off, it does not rip the package. So, Cimarron lettuce. my sloppy writing just for me. If I think people are going to see it, I tend to write a little <laughs> neater. So I'm gonna go through and do the rest of these just like that for my other eight cells. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna do just one of this lettuce because I have so much lettuce growing already. If you do the little shakedown, you can Maneuver just one or two seeds out of the package. Put that one in there. And I actually only want the one, so I'm putting that one back. Close up my package. Mint is really, really small, really small. Tweezers, again, come in very handy for that. I'm gonna put two in this one pod because it's mint. They'll be okay together. Another thing that you want to do while your seeds are being prepped is make sure your lettuce grow is clean and ready to go. I cleaned my first one that I emptied out and moved all the plants 
to the iHarvest um, just a few days ago. And it was, it was not a hard process. The lettuce grow is pretty easy to clean. Each one of the, they call extension kits, I call them tiers, they fit in my dishwasher. Uh, I was able to do three or four at one time. And it worked out great. The base I put in my bathtub and soaked it a while in bleach because it did have a bit of nutrient buildup. Ah, let's pause here on this. This is Calypso cilantro which seems to have good luck growing um, in hydro. Cilantro bolts pretty quickly and can be hard to germinate. So this is what I do. That's two seeds there. I just take something like a spoon or something else and just give it a little tiny crack and they will split in half like that. Then we're gonna take those seeds, both halves, and we're gonna put them in the pod. I'm going to do two of these. It is so annoying to not have cilantro <laughs> when I want it in the house unless I buy it at the store. So I am trying to perfect the process of growing it so that I always have my own cilantro. Now I just completely threw that one down in there. So here's two pots that will hopefully grow and do well. Calypso is supposedly one that won't bolt as fast either. There's also a variety called Slow Bolt Cilantro from Baker Creek that I've had good luck with before. But the last time I tried to grow it, it didn't germinate at all. Um, I had great luck with the one that comes from Garden. It grew very well, germinated fast, but then when I got infested with aphids, they were on that too, so it did not last long. Salad burnet, despite the name, is actually mm, kind of like a herb, and it is a perennial, which means I'm probably going to put some of this outside and see how it does. I'll have to check the zones, because sometimes they say stuff is a perennial, but that does not mean in all zones, and I am in 5B where it gets really cold in the winter. So not sure if my zone is included in that. I will find out. But inside, it doesn't matter, obviously. And the fact that it's a perennial means it should last and go on a long time. So I just did two pots of that. And we have one thing left, my Yugoslavian butterhead lettuce. This is a really pretty lettuce. I love the red varieties and what I have found in my growing experience over the past couple of years is that the red varieties tend to last longer than the green lettuces. So I've started growing more of those because here in my basement where it can be over 70 degrees quite often, um, they will last uh, quite a while. And I do keep a fan on them. That's a good idea for all your lettuces and greens because it keeps them a little cooler. And also, fans help with germinating, sorry, <laughs> not germinating. Fans help with pollinating tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, things like that, that are self-pollinating, meaning they have all the male and female parts in each flower. So you don't have to take pollen from the male and uh, germinate, and I said it again, and pollinate the female Clearly, I'm concentrating on germinating seeds. <laughs> but uh, all you need to do is trigger the pollen to fall, shaking the flower using an electric toothbrush or pointing a fan at it, and that gets the job done. My tray is full. I need to write my last thing on here, which was the Yugoslavian butterhead. So now I'm going to get some water. You want to put only about an inch of water in here. You don't want to drown the seeds, but you want to make sure that the plugs stay moist. So let me get my water.
this one was almost empty anyway, so I'm just going to put all of that water in there. Let's check the level. I need some more. As I mentioned, just about one inch of water. Put that back slowly. Put your dome on and close it. How you want to put this under your grow light? Now, most seeds do not need light to germinate, but it's nice that the light is there. So when they do come up, they're immediately under the light and they'll be nice and strong. Plus, the lights help provide a little bit of warmth. Over here, we have some of these trays that I also started a few days ago. And as you can see, baby's coming along very nicely. This one's a little bit behind. We've got only one up so far there. I need to look at my log and see what all I planted in here. Don't smash the seedling. Keep them covered up. And these are just sitting on my Click and Grow 25 for light, since it's not full. Works great since we're over here. New seedlings for that coming up as well. <laughs> the last one is uh, romaine and that one pot did not germinate. So I actually dropped um, a lettuce seed in there. I dropped a flashy lettuce seed in there. So we'll get that one going. Over here we have my 55 plug tray from Gurney's. Lots of water just came out of there. <laughs> But I started this a few days ago, and as you can see, I have several seedlings coming along nicely. I'll leave that dome off for a while and let them get some air. I filled every spot. And then over here, this is not what we're talking about, but this is the garden nursery. These are some of the garden Y-Pods that I purchased from them. And um, those are germinating as well. So if you're growing for a garden, you can use, obviously, their pods that you purchase from them, or you can start your own. I'm doing a combination of both this time. It has been a few days, more than a few for some of these. I have several seedlings finally ready to go into my lettuce grow. So at this point, all you're going to do, we're going to start with my sure thing zucchini because that one is just screaming. <laughs> Look at that. See the bound roots? Once they get into the lettuce grow and those roots get to spread out, it's really going to grow. This is only like day 12 for this. Zucchini and squash grow so fast. So what we're going to do is get one of my little lettuce grow cups down here. Just going to pop that rapid rooter plug right in there. It will fit perfectly. Look at that. Then you take it over to your lettuce grow. The pump's not running yet. The lights are on. I am going to run the pump after I get everything in place. And I want to put this one here on the front. So, um, actually, let's put it here. And then what I'm going to do is take one of my little reflective discs. This here. This is one that's been used, but that's okay. Still serves the purpose. And I'm just going to put that around there to block light from getting into the pot. Now, you might be saying, that's not going to stay. Well, guess what? Let me show you something. I can't remember who, but someone in one of the groups suggested these little glue dots. So I'm just going to take one little glue dot off of here. Stick it right there and then stick my reflective disc to it. One sec. Okay, so now that's in place very well. One down, 35 more to go if I even have that many ready. So I will show you that as I move along. Here we have my large tray where, where several things are ready to be moved. There's lots of pretty gorgeous red lettuces. This is some pink mazuna. This is kohlrabi. What is this? Oh, collards, green flash collards. Then we have another kohlrabi, I think, yes. And some more lettuce. So I'm gonna start moving some of these. Same process. This is a kit from Gurney's, but as you can see, these plugs are the same size 
as the rapid rooter or um, root riot. Now I'm only wiggling this one because it has a nice strong stem. If you have a tiny little seedling like that one or even lettuce, you do not want to pull it up by the stem. You want to lift this tray and push your finger through that hole there to push it up from the bottom so you do not tear or um, destroy your seedling. Look at those roots, beautiful roots. So this is my green flash collard. I'm gonna move that in. I have another collard over here that's been here for months and it's still doing great. I believe that is a Vates collard. Can't remember exactly, but this is a different variety that I'm trying. So same process. You can see how it's going over here. I have the pump running constantly now since um, these little things are gonna get stressed from moving. You can see this one, turnip greens, it's kind of limp. But as soon as it gets some nutrients and water on it, it will perk up. By tomorrow, it will perk up. So let me get another lettuce grow neck cup that I keep in my basket here. Just gonna pop that in. Fits perfectly, just like the others. And where do I want this? This one holds 36, it's pretty high. So I'll just put this right here. And the other thing I've been doing is using my little label maker here, which I will put a link to underneath. It's, excuse my area, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, it's a mess. <laughs> but I label them, I label most things so I don't forget what I planted. Um, Occasionally, I won't label something. That's obviously collard greens. That's going to look different than most other things. And then at the bottom here, we have my nasturtium cuttings. I've put three of them so far. I'm going to put three more over here. I have some more cuttings rooting here that have nice roots already. Looks like one of them might have petered out. Yep. But that's okay. I've been rooting these like crazy. I have a bunch more over here that are doing fantastic. And these actually started as a cutting from my outdoor garden. So I just keep cutting more off. You just stick it in water and you root it. And once it has pretty roots like this, I don't even need to use a net cut. These two inch cloning collars that I have here in this bag fit perfectly. So you just put that around the stem making sure that I'm gonna have to break this one up. As you can see, it's a couple pieces on here, but look at those gorgeous roots. You wanna put this around the stem. Let's get another one, that'll work. <clears throat> here we go. Roots there. Try to do this with one hand without tearing everything up. <laughs> All right, so once that's around the stem, this is a really long stem. But that's fine because it's going to go in there and it's going to get wet and soak up the nutrients and it's going to be fine. So I have two more of those to do and if I have extras, I'll put them somewhere else. But they are tasty and they are pretty. So I like having them all around. Okay, continuing on. Look at the roots on this Mizuna. Perfect. <laughs> And here we are 10 days after planting. You can see everything is growing great and fast since the roots now have ready access to nutrients and water. And it is just that simple. Links to everything that I used will be in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, just post. And don't forget, you can join me over in my hydroponic and gardening group, Arrow Garden, Cracky, and Gardening Fanatics on Facebook. And you can follow me on Instagram, where I promise I will get back to posting pretty pictures again soon. If you have not already, please like this video and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. 